Hey guys, Dan here. First of all, Happy New Year. I wanted to make a little update video of my settings because a lot of stuff changed since I recorded the last one. And I thought I'll just give you a quick update on what I'm using, graphic settings, steering wheel, pedals, sound, stuff like that. As you can probably tell, I actually moved back to 32 inch triples. I always kind of preferred to have the screens closer to my eyes. Went with the five, with the 55, went with the 55 inch OLED screens because it's a little nicer for content creation because you have more space for cameras. Uh, but with the 32 inch triples at 55 degree angle, I feel like I still can do quite a bit with camera placement. And this is just like, for me personally, I prefer this and you don't really lose a lot. Like in the vertical, vertical, yes, in the vertical FOV, I can't see the bottom of the car as good as before. But then again, that's kind of like really unnecessary to see so i'm not really missing anything going back to the 32s but uh, yeah that's the monitor setup but i think we'll start with the iRacing racing settings okay i'll give you a quick uh, rundown here options i'm still using my cinecube 2 pro my preferred wheelbase for years now make sure to use linear mode for the force feedback make sure on the brakes if you use a load cell or hydraulics make sure to put the force factor at zero and then I don't use any smoothing, damping, minimum force here. I think this is like the smoothing or the damping. I'm not really sure. It's it's a feature they recently added, but I don't really like it. I do everything in the um, Cinecube software. The wheel force, if you don't see the Newton meters, if you click on, on strength, then it will turn to this. Wheel force, it's a Cinecube 2 Pro, so this is 25 Newton meters. And then the maximum force is 45. Uh, it's a little bit weird because like the higher you put it, the lower the number gets. And think of it like that. If the in-game steering rack will put out 25 newton meters, it will map that to the full 25 newton meters the base can do. So if you reduce that, the in-game steering rack would need like 45 newton meters of torque to map that to the 25 the Simulcube provides. And this is a setting, it's typically around 45. It depends on the car, it depends on the setup. Caster has a big impact. It's typically between 40 and 60, I would say. It's relatively strong. I ran like that because it, it just gives you a nice workout while driving, um, but it's not better to run higher force feedback. It's personal preference. Just play around with the settings and see what you like the best. Yeah, I think this is pretty much stock. All right, graphic settings. Uh, this is what I'm using. Keep in mind, I'm using a relatively beefy PC with a 13,900K and a 4090, but even that can't really run <laughs> iRacing at the highest settings. It still will, it honestly, it will drop into... 30 high 30 fps at the starts in some scenarios so it's not ideal but it's good enough uh, especially the crowds i feel like can be a performance impact so this is set to low the rest is pretty much the max quality preset i'm drawing 40 cars and pits and my frame rate is typically limited to 161 i don't know why it's not showing that uh, you want to go 4 FPS below the refresh rate of your monitors. So these are 165 hertz screens, so it's capped to 161. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the best way to approach it, but that's what I heard and that's what I'm using. Cockpit mirrors are turned on. Two pass trees are turned off. Like a lot of the, a lot of that stuff makes no visual difference and brings a little bit of performance. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much what I'm using. Then for sound. I have the wind turned down a little bit and the tires turned up to the maximum and the rest is personal preference. I think it's good when you can hear the tires, when you can hear when they lose traction and stuff. can be very helpful. And also another thing I use is a butt kicker. I can highly recommend a butt kicker. Um, it helps me feel the grip of the car a lot. And it's an addition I never thought I would like that much, but I can't drive without it anymore. And I use the iRacing LFE basically just for wheel slip. And a little bit of rumble strip and the rest is basically turned down to the minimum i don't want to feel the engine vibrations or something just like the wheel slip is what helps me a lot to find the limit of the grip if you want to try out my settings i will actually upload the profile i use for ir sidekick profiles it's a little tool to configure your iRacing, racing much more comfortable than in-game i'll leave a link to the discord of this it's a free tool you can get the pro version that lets you have multiple profiles and stuff for five dollars per year or 15 lifetime i think and it's pretty much like an easier way to set everything up in iRacing you got your monitor settings for example here monitor width it's it's showing you what what you need to measure and this is if you don't know what the angle between your monitors is you can use some math um measure this distance here like in my triple screen guide 
and it will automatically calculate the angle for you enter viewing distance and then um, it would tell you the FOV is 181 and you can set it automatically here also like we'll set up the monitors for you if you only want to use one and check the field of view value okay <laughs> and then graphic settings are all in here it's very nice and then you can export and import profiles like I said you can have multiple presets but I think that is the pro version only uh, yeah, I'll upload my files and leave a link to the Discord where you can get IR Sidekick profiles. It's also like there's another tool where you can have multiple steering wheel presets. You don't have to remap it every time. Uh, it's very useful. Have a look at it. Okay, next thing, uh, the Simicube profile. I have my profile in the online database from Simicube. So if you go to the profiles here on the left and click on online profiles, you can just enter Dan Suzuki here. I think it's pretty much at the at the top of the list here anyways i don't know if it's just for me or for everyone but uh dan suzuki iRacing is the name i made it a little bit more responsive over the last weeks um the reconstruction filter was on five before i turned it down to three i reduced the inertia a little bit it's the wheel isn't as heavy anymore when you're not getting any force feedback signals and it responds a little bit quicker to the in-game effects you're getting um if you're not on True Drive, if you don't want to make an account, uh, these are the settings. This is, you can ignore it because iRacing doesn't use it, but this is what you need. Overall strength at 100%. I always say, always reduce the strength in game and not in the software, because if you reduce it in the software, what will happen is you will introduce some artificial clipping that basically will happen. So if the game wants to put out more force feedback, but the base only gives you like 60% and it would need like, 65 then it will just like clip this to 60 percent so you lose dynamic range the advantage is if you have a crash or something it will not put out these high forces but on iRacing like a few seasons ago they they implemented a filter where you will not get these super crazy force feedback impacts anymore but yeah i would recommend to always leave this on 100 percent steering range doesn't really matter since you calibrate it anyways i just have it at 900 if you use 900 uh, or 1080 or whatever it doesn't really matter bump stop feel it's just how hard this stop will be you will never probably hit it so whatever uh, then the change that i talked about the reconstruction filter is at three now no torque bandwidth filter damping friction and inertia all reduced a little bit mainly the inertia then i have the static force reduction at 10 percent that is if you have very long corners the force will be a little bit easier to to hold if that makes any sense slew rate is not limited and then the ultra low latency mode is set to 15 percent and this filter also is disabled but these are pretty much the simicube 2 settings i guess you can adapt that to any wheelbase that has similar settings and then the pedal software i'm when i'm not reviewing any pedals i typically use the vrs pedals because it's i tested so many pedals in every price range but i always kind of come back to the VRS pedals. I'm very curious about the Simicube pedals. Should get these soon for review. Uh, if they can replace the VRS pedals for me. But yeah, this is what I'm using. Throttle with a little bit of dead zone on top and on the on the bottom. When I'm resting the foot on the throttle, I don't want any, any inputs. Then for the brake, if I rest the foot slightly on it, I already get like 2% or 1.5% of inputs. I don't really want a big dead zone uh, at the minimum forces because... I think it helps with trail braking if you don't have like five kilograms of dead zone or something. I don't like that at all, but it's all personal preference. But I can highly recommend to try to not have any dead zone. You cannot rest your foot on the brake, yeah, but you can rest it on the clutch instead or something. So very small dead zone at the minimum at the brake and then the maximum. I reduced it a little bit. I don't run that high brake forces that I used to anymore. I don't really know how much it is in kilograms but the raw value is at 1.5 1.6 million or something 74 percent i think i was using close to 85 before it's all personal preference but yeah i think these are the important settings for iRacing if you have any questions uh leave them in the comments down below or join the discord and ask there also i stream on twitch every tuesday wednesday and friday typically 13 gmt or something feel free to ask there but yeah Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.